what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to track it back over to the shop where I can get something in there so that doesn't happen again. Well, just to give you a little backstory on why I was doing this, um, I have a welder that's coming to uh, shore up the bucket to put some new wear strips on the bottom, and I said, well, why don't I clean off the bucket before I bring it down to the shop, because I wasn't going to do any more work with it until it was fixed, and I didn't feel like going down to the far end and I said well I've been down there many times let me just go right down here quick dunk it and get on my way not realizing that it had rained um, my wife and I were in Florida for my birthday and uh, didn't know that it rained and I got on the material and I was on there for about four seconds when I realized that it was uh, not gonna hold me it turned around try to pull myself out for about 10 minutes and it was unsuccessful. I put these three clips in just to show that I always test the firmness of the uh, ground in front of me before I get close to it but because I had already excavated this whole area and been down there many times I didn't uh, think that it would be an issue and I was only going to dump the bucket so uh, one thing's for certain, I will never go in any area, <laughs> whether I've been there or not, without testing it. Um, live and learn, I guess, but uh, at, in the end, I guess it came out no harm, no foul. Uh, just a little bit of time and who knows how much money. <laughs> at this point, I realized that there's uh, no way that I'm getting out of here, so I called a heavy wrecking company there's not too many around us one actually had to come from uh, Tabor City North Carolina my wife had looked up and found and they came with a 35 ton uh, pretty good size wrecker and they didn't really know what to do they didn't put any uh, snatch blocks they didn't do any rigging really and they tried to pull me out Two times they broke the cable, and um, I'm no towing expert, but uh, from watching uh, Highway to Hell on TV, I knew that they should have done some, some sort of uh, mechanical advantage. But when the cables broke, they just packed up and said, oh, we can't uh, do anything, and off they went. Uh, fortunately, they were able to give me uh, Grant's Towing, who you will see in a minute, who finally pulled me out but the bad part is as you can see in this picture um, these pictures I'm uh, jiggled in quite a bit they spun me around they didn't really move me forward but they uh, stirred up the ground shaking it which made the lake water start to come closer to me um, so as you can see I'm farther in than uh, down in the muck than I was uh, when I started you know, it's never good when uh, Wendy has to come out to uh, assess the situation. She heard the noise, and here she comes. And the cavalry arrives. Grant's uh, heavy wrecking out of Mullins, South Carolina. He came with a uh, self-built 50-ton wrecker with a 25,000-pound uh, uh, log skidder uh, set up for towing and support and they will get the job done as you will see kirby grant the owner of the company uh orchestrated the rigging on this and if you look at it you'll see how many snatch blocks are on it and how many different pulls uh and he set it all up told me what he wanted me to do had his guys do uh it took them probably uh half an hour just to dig down in through that mud just to be able to hook up to the frame and uh, Kirby engineered a uh, uh, perfect way not to damage any of the uh, cylinders or the hydraulic lines on, on the upper part of the chassis where he uh, hooked into. Um, so you'll see the, uh, the actual pull, um, which is quite impressive. 
Now, I didn't have any cameras running. I didn't set them up because I didn't have time to go set them back up after everything, uh, trying to get this uh, everybody situated and uh, didn't want the machine to sink any farther, so I didn't get the camera set up. So have to rely on some of these pictures here. Um, but when Grant's towing finally came up, Kirby was such a professional, you could tell if you look at the way he's rigged everything and... and um, you know, there was never any worry, uh, at least for me, once I saw he knew what he was doing and his crew knew what he was doing. Um, so you'll have to just look at these uh, pictures in the beginning. But I did have one camera set up that I remembered was on the rail. So I, in a few minutes, I will hit that button and you will see the pull uh, out, um, which is from my view anyway. Uh, you won't see a side view, but you'll see the in-cab view, um, so I think you'll enjoy that.
we don't want to go backwards, that's for sure. I think you know what you're doing. That makes sense. Get your ship right and then pull it up. Hey, I just turned 60. Did you? I, I work 89 hours. I just turned 56 on Saturday, so. They don't make them like us no more. Nope. <laughs> who asked me if he could uh, go over to David's memorial area and pay his respects. Uh, he later told me that his daughter, uh, 24-year-old daughter, was killed uh, just about two years ago, about five miles away from here. And um, so he knows uh, the pain that it goes through. And I thought it was very nice that he wanted to, uh, to do that. And we talked uh, for quite a bit after, uh, after this was over. I get your fuel first. I need you to pull my box of wood out of ground. Oh, okay. Go ahead and turn around in the back of the wood. I had used quite a bit of fuel during the day of uh, doing the project and then I never shut it off the whole time it was stuck so that was like six hours of just idling and I was getting a little low on fuel and uh, Kirby said he had a, a tank on his truck so uh, we're gonna put a little bit in uh, just so that we don't run out during the rest of this process. I didn't see this part until I was doing the editing of this video. Uh, you can see Eric coming across after uh, coming from David's memorial area, and you'll see just how horrible it is to belong to the Losing a Child Club. Um, you can see he's clearly upset, and my heart goes out to him for his loss as well. I wasn't going to do 
in the bucket? You want to put him in the bucket? Yeah. Oh, wait till he moves. Look on the back side of that bench. No, I did oh, not. Because there's a. You know Craig Morgan. You listen to country music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the song. Well, it wouldn't for you. It wouldn't pertain exactly. The Father, My Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I that's the. I won't completely heal till I go home. Is on okay. the back. I even got it tattooed on my arm you. right here. I got you. Yeah, I know so, Craig. Yeah. But that's yeah. on the back. I got the little one on the front, but yeah. on the back. I seen that Cecil was his friend. Yeah. Yeah, I seen that on the side. I didn't walk around looking at the back of the. Bed. He was one that probably got hit first. I think Cecil yeah. got hit first, and yeah. I mean it was wasn't that much part, yeah. you know. But yeah. yeah.
some pictures here like I said I didn't have video of the side view and these are some pictures that uh, Kirby took Kirby Grant took and um, especially the last one you'll see how it he said it was about 240,000 pounds of pulling force um, and it even pulled his truck which was chained to that log skidder and you'll see how far it even pulled that um, to get it out but I'd like to thank uh, Kirby and his crew, and especially Eric of his crew, um, and they came right out. They didn't waste any time, set up, got their job done, did it efficiently, uh, very professionally, and you can tell that they knew what they were doing. So I'd like to thank them, and their card is at the end, so if anybody in the area, um, I would recommend them highly. Well, here, here's the next morning's aftermath. Mud. Quite a bit of mud. I shoveled out the tracks last night as best I could because I knew it would harden up. This is like a sticky, sticky, nasty stuff. I got to do a little bit more. I'm going to take it down to the shop and uh, power wash it, clean it up. But there's <laughs> there's the sinkhole now. So note to self, don't do, don't go down there again. I didn't realize it had rained while we had gone to Florida for a couple of days for my birthday. And um, it, everybody told me afterwards that it rained a lot here. So that's why it was, it was wet down there. But uh, you can see how deep. I've actually got more mud inside the cab than there is outside. I, when I turned, the door was open and... Uh, <laughs> And I had to shovel it out, but you can see here Broke the fan blade It went into the water when I try to pick the front up So I've got to replace that. I mean that's easy but uh, Yeah You can see how far into the mud <laughs> right up to the top So I got a little bit of work to do Big storm last night, and you can hear the wind. I'm sure it's going to make a lot of wind noise, but if you look down there, that's where the machine was. That sandbar was way out there. This is how much the water came up. So it's a good thing it got taken out when it did, because even right where it started to come up, where it didn't have to tow me anymore, the water's right to it. So it worked out pretty good. The water is up probably about four feet from what it was. So, got lucky. I get a quick shot of the inside. I started, a, I already took some of it out, but you can get an idea of how much was in there. And I kicked a lot of it out uh, yesterday as I was going. <coughs> so you could see. I mean, I was, it was in there. It was in there. Yesterday I cleaned most of it, got the inside spick and span, pulled the whole uh, liner out, the whole floor as well. But everything blew away last night, the ladder. Uh, but you can see how much sand came out of the <laughs> came out of the compartments there, all that underneath. I still got to clean the tracks, and uh, I was hoping the rain would clean the outside. It kind of did. Uh, I'll clean the rest of the inside. I still got to shovel off all that. I figured I'd get a, I'd get a shot with the flag is waving nice. Let me get back a little bit so you can see it. Of course, it's going to turn side the other way now. But zoom in on it. 
course, when I zoom in on it, it's not going to fly. There we go. But it's still going to be windy all day, so. But it's 60 degrees, so not too bad for what is today, the 8th of February. Uh, let me get a shot of the inside first. Got the floor mat back in. The sun's not in the best spot, but everything there is clean. I finally cleaned off the back window. That was from a long time ago. The splatters that came through the windshield. But that looks pretty good. Well, here's a close-up of the bucket, what, I'm, what I am having fixed. This edge that is all bashed up. This had been fixed right before I bought it. This was all open, but I told them I wanted them to weld it. But you could see they didn't do a really good job. So I've got a good guy that's going to be doing it. He's going to put half inch, half inch plate, bend it all the way around, and he's going to weld it down here on each one of those and fix all those spots. And he's going to give me a nice cutting edge goes up the whole side not just the bolt-on ones but one that goes up the whole side so that's what I was intending to do when I went to rinse the bucket so now I just cleaned it again all right it is finished there's the bucket all nice and clean already rusted only a couple hours and looks a little different I got everything Cleaned out, shoveled off, blasted off. Inside, nice and clean other than what I just went in there two seconds ago. My DOT sticker on there. And let's dig 18 sticker. We only got only two stickers I got on there. Undercarriage nice and clean, got everything. Sprocket, rollers, tensioner. I'm going to repaint the uh, counterweight that scraped in the mud a little bit. <laughs> that side pretty clean underneath. So it looks a little different <laughs> than when it came out. And that will never happen again. Thanks for watching.